and welcome to your 3 ABN Today in the Kitchen program. I am so pleased to be able to share this following hour with you. We have two special guests with us. They're no stranger to you. We are like family here. You know, it's so wonderful to share recipes and spend time in the kitchen. We get to know each other. Well, you all know Stephanie Howard, of course. Welcome back. It's great to be here. We're glad to be here. Wonderful. And Sarah Frain, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being with us and for sharing all these wonderful ideas you have. The theme of this hour of the menu, what, what is it that we're preparing? We are talking about eating the rainbow today. Wonderful. One bite at a time. <laughs> One bite at a time. Well, it's important. When we wrote our children's cookbook, Kidlicious, yes. we learned that the most important thing is eat lots of colorful fruits and vegetables. That's right. And so if we make it fun and we talk about eating the rainbow, things mm -hmm. that are red, yellow, green, blue, and even purple, then people will get good nutrition. Very and so good. we tell the kids we're going to eat the rainbow today. Very good. And Sarah, you're here because you are also a mother. Yes, I am. And your biggest desire, as we share that as well, is to feed our children the best food possible. What do these projects and recipes, what do they, what do, they do for your son and your family? Well, I think they definitely just encourage good nutrition, but also having fun in the kitchen. And yeah. we definitely find that when we cook with our children, they get more involved, they get more excited, yes. and they want to try the things that they've helped to make as well. That's good. And we do have a saying that we go, mm -hmm. we do with our fruits and vegetables. That's you want right. to say it with me? One, two, three. <laughs> Strive <laughs> for five, but, but eight is, is great. great. Oh, yay. Strive for five, but eight is great. Yes. Very good. Well, um, I, as a mother and fathers out there, we, we often think of the mother taking care of the children. Generally, you know, for the most part, it is that way. But we are thinking about you, single fathers, that are taking care of their children as well. So I just want to tell you, grab something to write on. We're going to share some tips and ideas with you. The recipes are going to be available here through 3ABN. And we're also going to share the contact information for Stephanie and Sarah, and you can contact them and get recipes. And I'm sure if you have any questions, you can contact them and they'll be happy to answer the questions. Mm -hmm. And you know, one idea creates another and another. Right. So I'm sure that our viewers also have some ideas to share with you. But for now, these are the recipes that we will be preparing for you today. The first one is rainbow fruit roll-ups. Mm -hmm. Next we'll be making cauliflower popcorn. Cauliflower popcorn. All right. It's a fun <laughs> one. And then the swamp water smoothies, great too. Oh boy, all the kids said, what? <laughs> and you don't have to wait for your birthday when you have veggie presents. <laughs> oh yes, we're gonna even have presents for you. And then one of my personal favorites, the apple nachos. Oh, how fun is that? Look at that. It looks amazing. And then the kids are going to come and have some fun with our fruits and vegetables. We're going to make a mango hedgehog and show you how to make a race car as well. All right. Well, guys, I hope you're ready because I am ready. And we are pleased to share these recipes with you. We're going to learn how to make the rainbow fruit roll-ups. And what do we need for this recipe, Stephanie? All we need for this one is four cups of fruit. We use berries, peaches, or mangoes. And we could also have one quarter cup of dried fruit. 
Well, friends, yes, we do have some friends in the kitchen with us. We have Annalise, welcome, and you co-authored the cookbook, Kidlicious, right? Mm -hmm. With your mom? Yeah. <laughs> oh, she looks at mom. Yes, we sure mm -hmm. did. It was a team effort. But you also have your friend Gracie with us. Welcome. Thank you. I am excited. I've never made fruit roll-ups before, so please teach me what are we going to make here? How are we going to do it? Okay, all you have to do is put everything in the pot. Gracie, we're going to start with four cups of blueberries. Okay. And these have been frozen, and then we just thawed them out. It's, mm -hmm. it's a great way to use frozen fruit and get good, um, you know, good fruits in, in your diet. Yes. Especially when it's not fruit season. <laughs> You're doing a good job, Gracie. Looks like you have experience in the kitchen, huh? And then we're going to add just that quarter cup of dried fruit. The dried fruit is optional. It just adds a little extra sweetness to okay. the fruit. And sometimes it's not as fruit fre uh, sweet as if you've got frozen. Mm -hmm. So, so how long do we cook f the, the, the fruits for? Well, really the only reason we're cooking it is to get the juices to come out of the blueberries a little oh, bit and I soften see. up that dried fruit. Okay. If you're in a hurry, you can, can stick it in the microwave or you can even just, sometimes I'll just put everything in, the, in a bowl mm. and leave it on the countertop overnight mm. and it'll be all soft by the next morning. So we're just uh -huh. going to do that real quick and then we're going to drop it into our blender. Okay. And we're going to blend it up and spread it out. It's super easy. You do not need a dehydrator to make this. Oh, wonderful. And the kids love to have it in their lunch box. <laughs> they think they're getting a special treat because all the other kids have special things. And it's almost like eating mm -hmm. candy, but you're, all you have is fresh fruit there. Yes. But tell me, what are the, um, why should I use this option? What is there in the ingredients for the regular fruit roll-ups that we see in the stores? What ingredients do they use? Well, there's a lot of ingredients in there. A lot of times, they, the first ingredient is sugar. Right. And uh, sometimes you'll find high fructose corn mm. syrup. They don't Some, even have real fruit. You're doing good. Some of them don't see even that? have real yeah. fruit. Let's get it. Yes. And some of them are, you know, some of them I don't know what's in them because right. I can't pronounce the words. Mm -hmm. That's so, right. So this one here, we know we have blueberries and we have pineapple. Right. We know that, so we're good. Okay. So the less ingredients, then the better, the more natural it is. That's right? right. If you can read all the ingredients and in what you're eating, you're probably doing pretty good. Okay. So is this good? Let's call that good for now. Okay. So you used uh, pineapples, dried pineapples in this recipe. All right. I use um, pineapples because he, here, let me, you scroll, scoot just a second and I'll take that. All right. Um, because they have a mild flavor. Let's see. If yes. you're doing peaches or something, you could use dried apricots or something mm -hmm. like that. Right. Okay. But pineapples are a mild flavor. You can put them in just about everything. Mm -hmm. And so that's, I'm going to leave that here, sweetheart, because I'm going to give you the pan to spread it in just a second. Can I turn it on? Okay, just a second. We're going to pop the lid on and we're going to make just a little bit of noise for a second, okay? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> we got it. I'm going to turn it on one more time. Okay, so there's your fruit roll up sauce. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give this to Annalise. She's going to need that spatula there, and we're going to spread this thin. Okay, so we're not using a fruit dehydrator. We are, we are not. We're going to put it in the, in the oven. It only goes mm -hmm. in the oven at the lowest temperature your oven goes to, which mine goes to 170. Okay. And it takes about four hours in a 170 degree oven. Four hours. Mm -hmm. So you make it and just let it sit there. Mm -hmm. Pour it on. Yum. 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 I love blueberries. <laughs> we as a family go blueberry picking and we have so much fun. We love to blueberry pick too. Well, you see that? So you want to spread it thin enough because if it's too thick, it doesn't dry out as well. Okay. Uh, but you don't want to be able to see through it very well either. So okay. you want to make it a thin, a nice thin layer. So if, a chunk um, of should I just okay. keep it on okay. the paper? Uh, or if I get it on the uh, cookie sheet itself, does it stick too hard? Or it's better because to this leave is parchment the, paper that we're using. I now. put it on parchment paper. And you know, when you get fruit roll-ups at the grocery store, mm -hmm. they have the paper backing. And it's fun to pull the paper That's off right. the backing. Mm -hmm. So this... It'll stick to the paper. Okay. And then you cut it on the paper. I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. Okay. Go ahead and spread that out, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. Sounds good to me. This is like a 100% fruit smoothie put in a platter like that, <laughs> a baking sheet. That's right. Sheet. You can actually do this with applesauce, too. Mm -hmm. You can do, do an apple one. Okay. That looks beautiful. 
And Lisa, let's call that done, and I'm going to let them see what this, what the finished product will look like, and then we're going to cut it into pieces and let you try it. Take a little bit right there. Take this out of the way. There you go. I'm going to take. I'll take this. Yeah, take that. Don't you like the blueberries mm. all over us if we're not Yummy. careful. Yummy. This is what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. It's stuck to the paper. Oh yeah, it sure is. And I usually usually use a pair of scissors, mm -hmm. but you can also use a, a pizza cutter. Pizza cutter. And kind of cut it across, but. To me, I have a kitchen scissors. I save these spe specifically for um, food. So I like oh, to cut kitchen scissors. These are my kitchen scissors. I cut the edges off so that you have you know, nice, even. nice, even edges. Mm -hmm. Cut this one off, and then I'll cut a slice. And the kids run and say, "Mom, may I please eat the edges?" Yes, that's right. <laughs> Can I eat the edges? Can I eat the edges? And that's so right. we're gonna cut a piece here. And what I do is still on the paper. It's still on the paper. Okay. And what I do at home is I'll roll them up. Yes. And yeah. I'll put uh, wrap them in plastic wrap so they don't get, you know, kind of right crusty. Mm -hmm. And then I can put them in the lunchbox. Perfect. And then when she goes to eat them, all uh -huh. she has to do is peel the paper. You want to do that? Peel the paper yeah. off and give a little piece to Miss Lindsay to like try. I'd like to see that. Would you like to try oh, a piece? Look at that. Oh, yes. Lindsay, look at that. Wonderful. That was perfect. Isn't that beautiful? You know, you put it in Thumbs three pieces? right off. Well, we only want to take a small bite, so take, cut a piece off and give it to every, give a piece to everybody. Great. Now, which flavor is this one that this you made? This one's mango. We made mango. Oh my goodness, I love mango. Mmm. And mango mm. peach is a good flavor. You can make any flavor you like, really. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. <sighs> oh my. What do you mm. think? Mmm. I love it. That's. That's mine. <laughs> the rest is mine. You've lost it. <laughs> it's oh my. yummy, yummy food. We like it. And it's so good for you. And I think they're getting candy almost in, the this in their lunchbox. This is so good. I love it. i got to make this for my boys. Well, while you're reading the next recipe, I'm going to keep eating this fruit roll-up. <laughs> okay, that would be great. Our next recipe is cauliflower popcorn. One head of cauliflower, two tablespoons of olive oil, one half teaspoon of garlic powder, and one half to one teaspoon of salt. I have never heard of cauliflower popcorn, but it is so good. So, okay, teach us how to make this famous cauliflower popcorn. This is super mm -hmm. easy, and you know something I learned here, Annalise, let's just put this together. Let's start with our cauliflower. Mm -hmm. We just cut the cauliflower up into popcorn sized pieces. Okay, if I don't have a fresh head of cauliflower, can I use frozen cauliflower or it doesn't work I'm as well? I'm not sure it works as well as frozen okay. because the texture is going to change. That's true. Okay. Okay, we're going to drizzle next? on a little olive oil. Olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. Just like popcorn. Just like popcorn, Just popcorn huh? Popcorn. <laughs> and then you can put in a little bit of salt, mm -hmm. a little bit of onion and garlic powder. Very good. A little bit of seasoning. It's got go. stuck, didn't it? <laughs> yes. There we go. That's all right. Okay, next. And okay. we have the uh, garlic powder garlic here. Powder. That's great. There you go. Doing good, Annalise. Here's your spoon. We'll stir it up. No okay. wonder you did a cookbook with your mom. <laughs> right, she's got it all down. Something I learned when I was cooking for kids and learning to feed kids yes. is. If kids don't like vegetables, they might like them roasted. Mm -hmm. And vegetables roasted yeah. have a different flavor. Yes, they and do. And it's a little sweeter, and people, kids tend to like it better. Yes. So I roast with cauliflower, and I tried this out at Annalise's school. Mm -hmm. I do hot lunch every once in a while. Yes. And I serve the cauliflower popcorn. A couple of the kids came by, and they say, I don't like I don't like cauliflower. I don't just try a piece. <laughs> I don't that's like right. cauliflower, but I love but, it. but you love that. And that's what happened. The kids came back through for seconds because they right. loved the cauliflower popcorn. You know, that's one good thing um, I admire that in you because you encourage the children to at least taste it. Sometimes we don't encourage our children to taste the food. Yes, it is different. Just go ahead and taste it. Take two bites out of it. You're not gonna die, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, it's very funny. There was a study done by a I don't remember who did the study, but the study basically right. said if they try a food enough times, yes. 
then they'll learn, learn to, to like, like it. it. So they don't have to try it. I think it was like seven to 15 times, yes. depending on the food. Yes. If you just have them try it, if they're willing to t try it, mm -hmm. then they can, uh, their taste buds adjust to it. Yes. And they learn to like the food after a certain length of time. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm a living testimony of that with asparagus. I did not like asparagus, but I prayed, Lord, help me like asparagus. So <laughs> I ate it, I don't know how many times, and now I just love asparagus. That's All right, funny. so uh, let's just prepare this. this. Now we're going to bake this out. We're just going to bake it in the oven at mm -hmm. um, 475 degrees, a hot oven. 475? And we're going to do it very quickly. We want it okay. to get brown, just kind of okay. caramelize on the bottom, and then we stir it up a little bit. So, Elise, you want to help me dump it in there? I'll, you, I'll dump and you stir with your spoon. There you go. Well, I encourage no all the parents to get your kids in the kitchen there so they can learn how to, their way around the kitchen. Very good. So all you have to do is simply bake it at 475 for yep. how long? For just about 10 minutes. 10 minutes. You give, it a, give it a shake every once in a while so that you get brown on all the sides. It's mm -hmm. very yummy. Very mm. good. Well, we have the finished product here. Um, it is nice and brown. It's been um, baked at 475 for about 10 minutes. It's been seasoned. And I tell you what, it's going to be a famous treat in your household. Try it out. Let us know how everyone reacted to that recipe. Well, it's interesting how some of our parents um, do call us and say, how do I get my children to like vegetables? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we ourselves as mom or dad, whoever is cooking most of the meals, um, we just do the same old routine, mm -hmm. same thing over and over again. And it's interesting that I'm used to making a cauliflower puree, mm -hmm. you know, like mashed potatoes instead, or just steamed, but I never thought of doing the cauliflower popcorn. Right. Just different ways to serve it. Some people like it differently. I've learned like a lot of different vegetables with asparagus, mm -hmm. with uh, Brussels sprouts. Yes. I couldn't get my husband to eat Brussels sprouts for yes. anything, and every uh -huh. time I, and I started roasting them. Yes. And he likes them that way. That is a very good tip. Very good idea. Start roasting our vegetables and try to just. Just explore. That's what the kitchen is. It's a laboratory, right? That's right. <laughs> just explore a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And just mm -hmm. be talking about eating the rainbow, you'll notice that there's no rainbow in cauliflower. Oh. However, mm -hmm. the clouds. <laughs> there's the clouds. Excellent. <laughs> the white does count as a color because it's very nutritious. Oh, even though it doesn't have your, you're thinking you always need red or green or something, right. but white is a very good color as well. It has each color has a different phytochemical that helps you fight different germs mm -hmm. and diseases. But not for white bread. Well, that doesn't count for bread. That's correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know your stuff, young lady. You that is very stuff. good. Your bread yeah, should well. be brown. What now? Your bread should be brown. <laughs> That's right. Your bread should be browned. Whole wheat bread, whole grains. All right. Well, are you ladies ready for the next recipe? The next recipe we have here is some uh, veggie presents. That's right. Whose birthday is it? <laughs> <laughs> Yours today. <laughs> Okay, our ingredients for the veggie presents are one medium zucchini, one medium summer squash, two cups of red potatoes diced, one half cup of red bell pepper diced, one half cup of sweet onion diced, and then one tablespoon of Italian dressing, or you can make your own little mix with one tablespoon of oil, a teaspoon of garlic, a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, and uh, one to two teaspoons of salt to taste. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to pretend it's my birthday, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we're going to make you a present. A colorful present. <laughs> okay, what are we doing? Okay, well, what's more fun than getting a present at the dinner table? That's right. And if it's a present of beautiful, colorful vegetables, it's even better. Mm -hmm. It's a present for your health is what it is. That's right. So we're going to make a little present. We're going to make a pouch of vegetables. So we're going to start off with our potatoes. Yes. And we're using red potatoes because the great thing about red potatoes is you don't have to peel them. <laughs> and I don't like peeling potatoes. So, and we're going to follow that up with some zucchini that oh, we've yes. chopped up. Wonderful. So you have red potatoes, you have the zucchini, yeah. some Thank green. You. Oh, you got it. <laughs> and we're going to put in there some you. yellow squash, squash mm -hmm. because it adds another color. And we That's like color. Good. And we're going to add a little bit of red pepper for color. Oh, yes. Very colorful. Look at that. <laughs> we love colors. Remember, we're oh, eating yes. the rainbow eating today. Eating the rainbow today. We're oh. going to add onions. I didn't know I could eat a rainbow. <laughs> You're eating a rainbow. 
Eating her in the rainbow. One recipe. Let's do that a little bit, and then we're going to put our dressing on. Mm-hmm. So we that dressing that you're gonna be putting in there mm -hmm. is the Italian style seasoning that you made. Yeah, it's an Italian dressing that I make from at home. Like One that. neat little tip is there the Italian dressing packets at the grocery store yes. are very yummy and mm -hmm. you can easily make those healthier by adding lemon juice instead of the vinegar. That's right. Don't you don't need to put all that in there, just put a little bit in. Mm -hmm. And then that the vitamin C from the lemon juice helps you to absorb the vegetables. Or absorb the minerals from the vegetables better than like the vinegar would. Right. And vinegar is for cleaning house. It's not for <laughs> eating. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Very good. So it's a light season, right? It's lightly seasoned. Mm -hmm. And then that looks so good already. It does look good. We're going to oh, wrap it up in some that is parchment so good. paper. Look at all that beautiful color in there. Yeah. I'm going to make a little noise here just for a second. Now, the biggest problem I have when I make these mm -hmm. is my husband and my son both have big appetites. Okay. And I can't seem to make enough of these <laughs> to make them happy. So they go through two or three or four of these. Do you have any more of those veggie presents left? Or? Yes. So that's one of our problems. We're going to make two of, out of this batch today. So we're going to, can you spoon about half of the mixture into here? And put it on. Right. Hold it go. for you. She's there my left hander. Yes, I know it is. My brother is left hander too. Very good. There you go. That's pretty good. So Annalise has co authored a cookbook, Kidlicious. And I can see she really enjoys she does enjoy her cooking. time in the kitchen. So I want you to see if we can get kind of a close up on here so I can show you how to wrap okay. up the corners of this. That'll be good. So do you remember how to do it, Annalise? You fold the first corner over. Oops, you have to do it slow. They have to see you slow. So you do one corner, mm -hmm. and then you fold it one more time and do another corner. And then you just keep doing that all the way around. Sometimes you have to scoot your stuff in until mm -hmm. you get all the way to the other side. Now, if we're going to place this present into the oven mm -hmm. as we place it on a cookie sheet, but mm -hmm. um, how hot does the oven need to be? We cook them at about uh, 375 degrees. 375. And they cook for about a half an hour to get half all those hour. veggies cooked. Okay. So once you get it all wrapped up, the bottom one I usually tuck under because sometimes it doesn't stay. Mm -hmm. You can do this in aluminum foil if you're um, maybe cooking over a fire or something. Okay. But this is a fun way to do it inside the house. And I don't like to cook with aluminum foil too terribly much. Mm -hmm. and then the so we just do it on the parchment paper. The the wrapping paper is colorful. It, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> now, the when you bake this, does the present open up by itself? Or? No, you get to unwrap your present at the dinner table. Oh, oh, oh! Very good. Okay. So you, good to you put them on the table. You can get everybody their own present on their plate, mm -hmm. and you can serve it with whatever else you're having for that day. Whether you're having a loaf or. Mm -hmm. Um, a sandwich even. It's mm -hmm. good with lots of different things. Well, this is really nice because when the kids take their lunches to the school, yeah. it's all in one place. Um, they can also take that uh, present and put it in a microwave, if I'm assuming, to warm mm -hmm. it up. If you want, yeah, if you have leftovers from the night before or whatever, you can mm -hmm. put it in a school lunch. I'm a full a fan of using leftovers in the lunchbox. Me too. Because Me too. it makes life easier for it's us. It's practical, you know, very practical. So if it's too much at the edge, just move all the vegetables in more. Yep, you can just keep scooting them. Just adjust them as you go. As you need it, yep. You're you doing very good, Annalise. And roll them up. Well, maybe someday you'll have your own restaurant, huh? <laughs> I like inventing my own things. You like inventing your own things. That's good. How okay. old were you when you started being in the kitchen? You couldn't talk yet, huh? I'll and tell you were helping you Mama hold a little stuff. secret on her. Oh. When she was little, we had um, a <laughs> countertop that had like a corner. Yes. And so when she was very little, I put her in the back little corner, and she would sit up and watch me, you know, cutting or cooking right. or whatever. And she would sneak food even then. Oh. 
<laughs> she oh, would sit cute. there and she'd take a bite of tofu, even if it was raw <laughs> tofu or whatever, she'd just take it. And, <laughs> and she'd think it was funny. So uh -huh. she, she oh, doesn't sure. say that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so ever since she could sit up, because she had to obviously sit up to do that, she's right. been sitting in the kitchen and helping me cook. Very good. <laughs> and it's, it's good. And I just, I can't um, emphasize this in, in emphasize it enough to bring your children into your kitchen. Sometimes we think that you're in the way, you're going to slow us down. But in reality, in my personal life with my children, uh, they learn to, to assist you. And someday you're going to go to college if the Lord tarries. And who's going to tend after you? Right? Who's going to cook for you? You're going to be away. Mom can't do it all your life. Mm. So, yes, bring your children into the kitchen. Introduce them to the colors of the rainbow in our foods. And just get them used to having or learning to choose, how, make healthy choices. Well, we do have another recipe. And this is such a funny title. This is so cool. The Swamp Water Smoothie? Wow. Well, let's find out what we need for this recipe. One half cup frozen pineapple, one cup apple juice, two frozen bananas, one to two cups of kale, one fourth to one half teaspoon minced ginger, one orange peeled, one half cup frozen mango, and two tablespoons of fresh mint. This is the swamp smoothie. Absolutely. How did you come up with this <laughs> recipe? Well, you know, sometimes to get those boys to eat their greens, you have to get a little creative. creative. So. <laughs> well, right now, friends, as you can see, we have Luke Frain with us. He is uh, Sarah's son, and we are so excited that he's here in the kitchen. So, boys, you need to be encouraged. Thank you so much for being with us. You're welcome. <laughs> is this like one of your favorite smoothies? Yeah. It is? Okay, walk us through. What are we going to do? Um, All right, what should we start with? The bananas. We're going to start with mm. our bananas. Now, those bananas look like they're frozen. These bananas have been frozen, mm -hmm. and we cut them into pieces yes. so that they're a little bit easier for our blender to deal with. Okay. Um, when You can put those right in the blender, okay? And when you're doing bananas for smoothies, you're going to want to look for bananas that are spotted because they are a lot more sweet than the ones that are a little bit green on the ends and that kind of thing. So look for your bananas that are spotted, not quite as ripe as you would want them for banana bread, mm -hmm. but good and spotted like this. And you'll just peel them, slice them. You can put them in a Ziploc bag. You can yes. put them in a bowl. I actually have a bowl in my freezer all the time that has bananas in them. So mm -hmm. anytime we want a smoothie or anything <laughs> like that, we can just go to our banana bowl and put them right in our smoothies. That's right. Okay, so next we have some frozen mango. We actually are using Yummy. one cup of frozen mango today instead of the pineapple and the mm -hmm. mango combination. So, the nice thing about smoothies is that they're very flexible. You can do just about any fruit or vegetable combination that you want. Right. Um, so today we have a little bit of a tropical flavor with the mango. Yay! We have. Uh, <laughs> we're actually using clementines today, so we're doing two small clementines instead of one peeled orange. Um, and you can really adjust any of these quantities to your liking. Very good. All right. Next, we have what's going to make our swamp water color. Well, yes. We are using kale. Yummy. Kale has really become very popular over the last yes, year or so. That's right. And it's been listed on the um, superfoods list. And yes. so kale, if you can get your kids to eat kale, you'll be mm -hmm. doing them a huge favor. Mm -hmm. Kale also, it does tend to have a very strong, almost bitter flavor. So yes. if it's your first time putting greens in a smoothie, you may want to start with a more mild green, like spinach or something else like that, because kale is a very strong flavor. Or even do half and half. That's kind of how we started. We did half spinach, half kale, and then mm -hmm. we moved to the kale. Very good. All right. That's a very good tip right there. It's just gradually, yes. you know, changing. Because if you start something new you've never done before, you're going to be like, oh, I don't like it. But it's just a matter of adjusting, right? So very good. So now you're to the point that you just use the kale, not the spinach in there. Okay. Now what else do we put in this? All right. We have a very swamp. small sliver right. of ginger, fresh Ooh, ginger. Yes. Yes. I'm going to put that right in our blender. Now, sometimes you may have seen this at the grocery store. It's a very funny looking, <laughs> has lots of fingers <laughs> and different things like that. This is called ginger root, and um, it has a very strong flavor, which is why we're using just a very small amount of that in our smoothie today. Mm -hmm. What you're going to want to do is just cut a little bit of a piece off of there, and you're going to want to peel it when you put it in your smoothie. Um, but okay. it just is going to add a very, very... Um, Tangy taste yeah, to it, right? Yeah, it's got a good <laughs> taste to it. So we're going to... And if you don't care for the flavor of ginger, you can leave this out, too. Oh, Okay. Wonderful. Now we're going to put a little bit of fresh mint 
And this is just going to make the smoothie come alive. Whenever you mm. put fresh herbs in something, it just really gives it a lot of fresh flavor. And um, I really have to say, this to is life. a super duper uh, swamp smoothie. Absolutely. <laughs> Wonderful. Look at all those ingredients. Okay. Okay. And now we're going to put our liquid in there because we need to allow this to be able to blend. So, look, if you want to start with maybe about half of that, this is apple juice that we're using. And really, you could use any type of juice that you want. You, I even sometimes will use water or a non-dairy okay. milk as well. Good. Good to know. Okay. All right. Well, that's just going to add a little bit of extra sweetness. Okay, okay, so we have all of our ingredients in our blender. Mm -hmm. Look, if you want to just put that right on there. Okay. Now we'll make sure we put our lid on, otherwise we could have a <laughs> swamp water on our ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. All right. Now this one we could have probably put a little, little bit more kale in. This is not maybe as green as swamp water truly might be. So if you wanted to add a little bit more of the kale, you definitely could do that or any other green that you would like to use. Yes. So we love to have fun with our smoothies and have fun different cups that we can pour them in. So this one is kind of like a mason jar. Mm -hmm. Give that a try. And You're going to drink that green drink? You yeah. are? <laughs> the, guys, the, the, the guys your age, you know, the boys are going to be like, oh, no, I don't think I can drink it. <laughs> well, let's see if it's child proof. All this right. is boy proof. Give All it right, a whirl, chug, Luke. chug, chug. <laughs> is it good? How is it? Real good. Real good. Real All good. Right. It's not just good, it's <laughs> real good. All right. Well, sometimes you might have a little bit of extra smoothie left once yes. everyone has gotten their fill for breakfast or a snack or whatever you may have made it for. And there's a lot of different things that you can do with your leftover smoothie. One of our favorite mm -hmm. things is to, um, to pour the leftover smoothie into a popsicle mold so that you can have it frozen later on um, on a hot a summer day idea. for a popsicle. So, look if you want to just pour some of our smoothie mix in there. Mm -hmm. That's such a good idea. And then another idea, if you would like to um, pack this in your kids' lunch, sometimes yes. if smoothies um, cool off, they get watery and mm -hmm. they don't taste as good. Right. So something that you can do is just to take your leftover smoothie mix and to pour it into a, a freezer-safe small container yes. and um, take that out in the morning when you're packing your kids' lunch. And then by the time it, lunchtime it's comes around, mm -hmm. it's been thawed, and they can eat it with a spoon, kind of like an applesauce consistency or... Um, you know, maybe even it might be smoothie consistency by that point. So mm -hmm. there's lots of different things. Don't throw your leftover smoothies away if you have anything no. left over in the morning. So oh, this is great. Our family is a smoothies family. My boys love smoothies. And this is one new smoothie for us to try at home, for sure. The great thing about smoothies, though, is there's so much flexibility. Yes. You can just really put almost anything in mm -hmm. a smoothie, and it's going to taste great. Yes, like uh, Granny Smith is the green apples, right? Mm -hmm. That and would add a really that. nice tart taste to them okay. as well. Yep. But well, we found that it's really important to put a banana or mm -hmm. a frozen banana or maybe an avocado or something like that yes. that really adds to the creaminess That's of the texture. That's right. So. Mm. Well, guys, I'm sure you're savoring all this at home, but we must move on to the next recipe and that is some apple nachos. Mm -hmm. What do we need for this recipe? For our apple nachos we need one fourth cup of almonds sliced, one fourth cup pecans, three crispy apples, one fourth cup lemon or orange juice, three tablespoons of peanut butter drizzle, three tablespoons of hot fudge sauce, and one fourth cup of dates or raisins. To make the peanut butter drizzle you'll need two tablespoons of peanut butter, and one tablespoon of maple syrup or agave nectar. And to make the hot fudge sauce, you'll need one fourth cup of vanilla soy creamer or soy milk or coconut milk, one tablespoon maple syrup or other liquid sweetener, and one cup of carob chips or non-dairy chocolate chips. Very good, guys. Now, this is a very healthy option. You may see the fudge syrup, and what we're using is the carob chips. We are using carob chips, yeah. Okay. Well, walk us through. I'm excited. I had never, ever heard of um, apple nachos before. They're a favorite in our family, and we sometimes have them even for yeah. breakfast. It's so healthy, you can even have it for breakfast. Yes, so definitely. We definitely enjoy having apple nachos at our house. So, Luke, mm. if you want to start by layering our chips on our plate there, we're going to call the apples chips. So what we did to the apples was 
rocks, we, rice, and cut them in half. And we cut them in, in half and then took the core out of them. Okay. And then um, we slit, very thinly sliced the apples. Okay. And to keep them from browning, what we did was just pour a little bit of lemon juice on them. So yeah. these actually have been cut for a little while and they haven't turned brown. So that's a good tip. Um, mm -hmm. is just to remember to put a little bit of orange juice or um, apple juice, either juice that has acid Citrus. in it. Mm -hmm. yes. yep. mm -hmm. And that works out just great. Um, sometimes if you find that the apples are a little bit damp, you might want to wipe the, um, wipe the juice off so you don't have such a strong apple, or pardon me, lemon flavor. Okay. Um, and then we did try to choose some apples as well that were very um, tart, crisp apples mm -hmm. or very sweet and crisp apples. You're definitely going to want the crispy apples. So we have some Granny Smith apples. We have a couple of Pink Lady apples in there. Honey nice. crisps would also be fantastic. So just any crisp apple would really work out well for this recipe. There are so many versions of uh, types of apples. And then when I go to the grocery store anymore, it's like, when did this one come around? It you know? is, it's true. And we're from Michigan, and we get lots of <laughs> oh, apples right. grown in Michigan. So yes. we really get to experience okay. um, so while apple Luke, that's finest. Well, look is setting up the stage with the chips, the yes. apples. Yes. Um, what are you going to make over there in We're going to start with our hot fudge sauce. And to make our fudge sauce, I have um, put just a small amount of our um, non-dairy creamer in here. And I'm actually okay. using a vanilla flavor. Mm -hmm. And when you're using the, the non-dairy creamer, you actually can eliminate the sweetener if you want. So we're actually not going to be putting the maple syrup in this um, when we're making this. And I'm just going to bring this to a boil. Mm -hmm. And it won't take very long because I have just about a fourth of a cup here. Okay. Luke, How's it going there, Luke? You're doing a really good job very there. Very nice. It looks like a flower almost. <laughs> So and this is usually uh, corn chips that people put for the nacho chips, and this is apple nachos. Yes, <gasps> yes. And so Amazing. it's a nice dessert, but it's also very healthy. And um, Luke actually has diabetes, and so we're always looking oh. for um, foods that have lots of fiber in them because that tends to stabilize his blood sugar. Okay. And so leaving the peel on the apple and having the apples in place of the chips mm -hmm. really adds a nice amount of fiber to our dessert. That's right. Okay. so. I just have added our carob chips into the boiling creamer. And you turn off the burner? I did turn it off, and this should um, just very quickly melt and make a nice smooth sauce that we can drizzle onto our Just with chips. the creamer. Just with the creamer. Look at if that. If it doesn't quite, if the chips don't quite melt, you can turn the, um, the burner heat back, back on, on again. Mm -hmm. But it should be good enough just with the, bringing the creamer to a boil. Now, this, the, once you drizzle it and once it gets cold, does it get hard or does it remain soft? Creamy? It will harden up a little bit, but mm -hmm. with the creamer in there, it does keep it a little bit of a softer consistency. It won't harden quite as hard as if it were the, um, the carob chips themselves. Okay. If I were to make this at home, when I make it at home, how long can I store it for and which other recipes I can use this for? Well, you can use this carob fudge sauce with lots of different things, and it will store in the refrigerator for about five days. Okay. And what are some things that we like to have our carob fudge sauce on? Bananas. On bananas. Oh, it's great. Dipped yes. in bananas. Dip and them. then you can um, roll it in like chopped peanuts and put them in nice. the freezer. Yes. And make like a banana popsicle kind Nut of thing. Cluster. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's really great on ice cream, like an ice cream sundae and that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of uses. Luke, you've nice. used all of the apples. Quite amazing. <laughs> Would you like to that. put some of our <laughs> yeah. carob fudge drizzle? While he's doing that, I'm going to start with our um, peanut butter drizzle here. Okay. And again, and this is a very simple recipe. I have just a little bit of um, maple syrup. You can also use agave nectar. Well, I want our friends to look at this, <laughs> what Luke is doing. <gasps> He's doing so a good job good. there. <laughs> Okay, Luke, I want to be your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of neighbors, if you wouldn't mind uh, grabbing that little basket over there. Oh, not at all. We made okay. a cute little basket. We always like to um, oh, do kind things for our neighbors, and we made a cute little basket there. And if you can see the tag there, it says, Nacho Ordinary <laughs> Neighbor. <laughs> Just playing off of the I apple nachos. That. And in there, we have everything that you would need mm. for your neighbor to make their own batch of apple nachos. We have a couple of good wow. crisp apples in there. Yes. Some little mason jars filled with our little drizzle sauces. Mm -hmm. And then little cute baggies full of the raisins and nuts that we're going to be topping our um, our apple nachos. apple nachos with here in just a minute. Very good. So we're I love this concept. The tag says Nacho Ordinary Neighbor. Yes. Neighbor. This so is awesome. Great way to go and meet your Very new neighbors. Creative. Or yes. if you need to bring a get well gift to someone or someone's had a baby or something like yes. that, then mm -hmm. it's a really nice thing that you can do. And it's something that keeps for a while, so it's a dessert that they wouldn't have to immediately eat as well. So. 
they could, you know, have it, save it yeah, for the weekend. Just load it up, Luke. Oh, I know you're enjoying that. <laughs> and as you you're going to share with uh, your friends here in the studio, so I it's okay. So. <laughs> and this fudge drizzle, or pardon me, the peanut butter drizzle came together in just a matter of probably about 30 seconds. So that was just quickly bringing that to a little bit of a boil. You don't want to take it t um, too long because otherwise it will burn. So just keep a good eye on it. Mm -hmm. That maple syrup in there, it will burn pretty quickly. Now, how active are you in the kitchen, Mr. Luke? I see that pretty you... active. Pretty active, huh? He Luke likes, likes to, to help create out. his own recipes, so good. Yeah, she has lots of fun in the kitchen. Well, having uh, diabetes, you said. Mm -hmm. Is it called juvenile? Yep, yep. Diabetes. Type one or juvenile diabetes. Okay, yep. you know it's such a blessing to know these types of recipes that he can have because many of our viewers um, have children like mm -hmm. that too. Mm -hmm. So this is so helpful. A lot of times. And we don't have any health issues, and we don't know what to prepare for mm -hmm. ourselves, yep. let alone for someone that has a special need, such as this dietary uh, uh, issue that you have, so yep. juvenile diabetes. And a lot of people these days are concerned with gluten, and this obviously is something that would be gluten free, gluten -free. as well. So you exactly. can serve this to anyone who is gluten sensitive. Luke, why don't you put some of the nuts let on me top? Move this. Let's see what Obviously, he's if doing. someone has a nut sensitivity, you wouldn't want to do all of these toppings, but you could do a sunflower butter. Right. Or if it's a peanut allergy, then they could have um, possibly almond butter or something like that. Load it up, so. Luke. <laughs> You're doing a good job. <laughs> nice. All right, we're going to put some pecans. Okay, so we have the roasted. Almonds. Yep. And we did um, toast these nuts in the oven for about 10 minutes at kind oh, of a lower temperature oven, so there's extra crunch on with the nuts here. Mm -hmm. Very and good. then if you want a little bit extra sweetness, we have some raisins that you can put on there. You can use chopped dates. You can just eliminate that all together as well. So. Right. Right. Very good. And this is all natural sweeteners. It is. You don't have to worry about. Well, this looks amazing. You did an excellent job. We have the beauty shot right here, the, the final product. These are the apple nachos. That's right. You heard correctly. Apple nachos. So we had the peanut drizzle on there and also the fudge drizzle. Yum, yum, yum. I think I'm going to sneak a slice of apple. May I? Yeah. <laughs> better try some. Piece Let's try this All out. All right. Here we go. Mmm. Mm. Very good. Mm. Good job. Oh, wow. I think I'm going to go sit in the corner. <laughs> Why don't you guys read the next recipe? <laughs> Our next recipe, we're making a couple of fun fruit salads. Mm -hmm. The first one that we're making is the race car salad. And for that, you'll need one banana that's been peeled, one kiwi sliced, one strawberry that's been stemmed, one blueberry, and three toothpicks. And we'll also be making a mango hedgehog. And for that, you need one mango, four raisins, and two red berries. I'm very excited and thankful for these recipes because a lot of times we make uh, salads, fruit salad, and we don't know what's in it. And a lot of times kids are like, I don't like this, I don't like that. But this way, they know exactly what's in it and it's so much fun. I wish I was a kid again. <laughs> Luke, what are you going to be making? Um, we're going to be making the race car. Mm-hmm. Race car. Okay. <laughs> and Annalise, you're going to lead out doing which one? Mango hedgehog. All right. Well, I love all these fruits. Okay, mothers, tell us how these recipes came about, these ideas. Stephanie? Well, you know we're talking about eating the rainbow and eating lots of different fruits and vegetables. And so we were looking at fun ways to get the kids to eat more fruit. And it's always fun to play with your food. Yeah. And it's fun to create things, and then, <laughs> then we get to eat it. I so. can't believe a mother just said that. <laughs> it's <always laughs> okay to play with your food. It's always okay to play with your food if you eat it when you're done. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we don't want to waste it. We just want to eat it. That is true. So we were looking at different recipes and different things, to different ways to make things look fun and cute. And yeah. so it's hard to find. A lot of them are butterflies and flowers and stuff. So mm -hmm. we've tried to find some that were friendly all the way around, and the race car is super friendly for boys. Yes. Because all boys like cars. Yes, they do. Well, teach us how to make these. Uh, um, okay, before you do that, the first trick to doing the race car is mm -hmm. the proper banana. Mm -hmm. Open the banana yep, yep. backwards. The banana has to be, it's, it's the top of the, it's the one on the top of the bunch that has the little curve in it, you see? Okay. Because this is the back of the race car. Oh, and this okay. is the front of the race car. All right. So let's. We'll sh you'll see when it's all together. But you need okay. to. You need to check your bananas for that little curve. <laughs> all right. Okay. Now go ahead and open your banana. Up. 
Open it backwards so the front doesn't get mushed. You can do that. That's how a monkey That's opens good. a banana, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It, it also, keeps, right way it also keeps the strings from peeling off, too, if you peel it from the bottom. Mm -hmm. Very Go ahead and peel your banana. And don't break it. Keep it whole. Keep it whole. And so um, you ladies try to figure out different ways of um, making food fun in the kitchen. Is there a time when you just run out of ideas, or these ideas, Sarah, when you're dealing with Luke, what am I going to make for him next? Well, you know, again, we've talked about this, but it seems like whenever you let your kids get involved or let them choose, mm -hmm. then there's a lot more likelihood <laughs> they're going to eat what they're making. So right. a lot of times I'll just ask my kids, what should we make? Mm -hmm. What vegetable do you want to have with That's a good idea. whatever we're having for dinner that night? Okay, or help Luke, them to we're make watching you. So. All right. What are you going to do, Mr. Luke? Next step, what I said. Um, you're going to cut the kiwi. You okay. want to cut the kiwi or do you want me to cut the kiwi? I'll cut the what kiwi. are we using the kiwi for? The kiwi are, is for the wheels. The okay. wheels, okay. So you're going to cut the end off. Okay. Go ahead, Annalise, grab your kiwi and go ahead and cut. So you, your kids have been taught how to work that knife. Up. Yes, for sure. Need four slices. Very good. How many wheels are you putting on your car? Four. Four wheels? Okay. Four. And Elise is preparing hers. One is a dark kiwi. And a yeah, dark one? you got to cut them into, oh, you have to make them thin enough to get four slices. Four slices. So there you good. have four It's wheels. so nice to do activities where our children are invited. I don't usually attend activities that my children are not invited mm. because the short time that we have with our children, I mean, they spend all day in school, um, so I don't want to give up my time with the kids. Mm -hmm. So when we're in the kitchen, it's one of the places in the house that we spend a lot of time in. Mm -hmm. So we have family worship, we, fam we have family uh. cooking, family washing dishes, cleaning the house. So it's all part of um, raising children that are um, you know, independent. And not only and for useful. now, but they can but take these skills into their adult life and they'll exactly. be just that much further ahead when they go to college and that yes. kind of thing as well. Definitely. Okay, so here Luke is poking. Ouch, ouch. <laughs> 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 okay, so you have the kiwi wheels. All right, so here we're making the cars. Broom, broom. Very good. So these kids actually eat these. Uh, fruits once you're done making the, the salad. Most definitely. That's the best part. It's a fun <laughs> yeah. salad. Very good. All right. So then you put a strawberry on top. So what is that supposed to be? The, the hood? The what person. Is it? Oh, the person. All right. <laughs> Are you having fun the wheel. yet? <laughs> <laughs> Are you having fun yet, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. All right. So you're in the top. Slice the top off. Mm -hmm. This is really good. I think I what comes to my mind is like an adventurer's club or eager beaver's club. Mm -hmm. You know that they making can make mm -hmm, making it exciting. Or if your kids and have friends involving. come over after school and they want to have a snack, definitely surprise yes, them. Yes, they Woo! would have so much fun. They could make it. It's an activity as well as awesome. Very good. And then we have the head. <laughs> oh, well, this car is done. Well, I think we're missing something. Oh, we a are? Hat. Our guy needs a hat. Oh. Or I some hair, put, however you want to look at it. I didn't put a hat on the one over <laughs> <laughs> But they like the little hat. Okay, now i got to see this little hat thing. <laughs> okay, I think we still have it. <laughs> Annalise having a oh. crazy hair day, Annalise. <laughs> crazy hair day. <laughs> Look at this one. Annalise has a flat tire. Let's oh. Look at that. There we go. There you go. Oh, how much fun that is. There's no wrong flat. way to awesome. make, it, make it. It's always cute, and it's always just the way you like it. You know what it's all about? It's about having a good time and eating healthy. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, so here's the hair. The hair is the little... Uh-oh, your toothpick isn't long <laughs> enough. Okay, so the key is to make sure that the toothpick sticks out of the uh, grape. Just long enough to get the Just hair Just long on. enough to pin the hair on. It's like a little toupee, huh? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yay. Good Looks job, awesome. Uh -oh. Good job. Using your wheels again. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Vroom, vroom. Let's go to the next recipe. All right. We have the hedge. Hedgehog? The hedgehog, that's right. We're going to move on to the little hedgehog. We'll okay. put the little car Done. over here. And the hedgehog is super easy. We don't want to cut the mango right in half. You want to cut it on the 
Can I on the other side of the pit that's in the middle. <laughs> that's right. So there you go. You can give that cheek, as we call it, over to Lucas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Use your knife to cut it all the way through, or you're going to mess up your little nose on the hedgehog. Okay. Then you put. <laughs> now you cut that one off. Teamwork <laughs> there knife, with There mom. you go. This knife is a little bit dull, but yeah. we want it dull for children. Yeah, we don't we want, want it to make sharp. it too sharp. That's right. Just yes. keep going. You got right to the pit. We're almost there. We're almost there. We did it. No. Success. <laughs> We have successfully there you cut go. our... Now, before you do it, Annalise, let's show them what we're doing. Okay. Show them how to make the little pie, the little things on the hedgehog. Make lines. Right, stop with that one. Let's use this knife. That might cut the little lines better. If you can Just put it flat so we can see it. So you you want to cut there little lines straight through it uh, and cut not it in, through the skin. Not right? through the skin, though. You want to cut it only just in the mango. Only in the mango. Okay. And then you want to make them into little squares or diamonds. And the bigger you make them, the bigger your little, mm -hmm. um, what do you call those things? Spines. Quills, there you go. <laughs> or, or you can make them really small and you can make them, right. depending on how well you cut them or how you like to cut mm -hmm. them. So Annalise is cutting hers. We have got to make food fun for our kids. You know, we sometimes worry job. about our dinner. Oh, we're going to put a dinner together. We're going to have the Johnsons over. But we forget details, special details for the menu for the children. Mm -hmm. So um, even so, if it's not a children's gathering, it's just nice to have, um, to think about them. They feel we so special when you think about them. I just love children and see their innovative ways of, you know, they teach me, mm -hmm. you know. And when they get involved, it's just so encouraging. Okay, how's okay, it going? Okay, Mr. Luke, how's it going? Let's do your side cuts now. Are you ready to now. do the side cut so we can do the quills and what else? He's doing a good job there. Oh, yes. He's going to have little spines. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. going to have big spines and he's going to have little spines. That's good. That way we can see both of both them kinds. at the same time. Yes. All right. So while he's Should cutting here, we, heard uh, we need Annalise to okay, Annalisa? continue. You Where's turn you? it inside out. You just turn it Ooh. inside out. Oops. You cut through a little bit. That's okay. We'll just push That's it through all that right. way. Oh, there you go. There you go. There they go. Through. There you go. And then you lay him down, mm -hmm. and you put his little nose on, which is going to be a cute little raspberry. Okay, so we have a raspberry nose. Oops, but it, and then two eyes. We used raisins for the eyes. Okay. Good job, Quills mom and son flies. team Good here. Job. Look at that. that Yummy. Backside. He's got lots of quills, doesn't he? There you go, <laughs> Lucas. There's a raspberry for his nose. His quills his need to eyes. come apart. Yeah, your quills are kind of stuck together, aren't they? That's okay. We'll just work with so it. So the mango bit. should be fairly ripe. It needs to be a pretty you, ripe little mango. To be flexible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can stick these on with a toothpick if you. If you need if to. If they don't stay yeah. in place. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we are going to pause now. We're going to go to your contact information because you do have a cookbook available. And also, we're going to take a break, a news break, and we'll be right back. If you would like to purchase one of the cookbooks for yourself, or if you'd like to know more about this ministry, you can do so by writing to Emanuel Institute, Post Office Box 399, Pullman, Michigan, 49450. That's Emanuel Institute, Post Office Box 399, Pullman, Michigan, 49450. You can call 269-908-0446. That's 269-908-0446. You can also visit them online at GiveThemSomethingBetter.com. That's GiveThemSomethingBetter.com. Or you can call the ABC for their book at 800-765-6955. Okay, friends, this hour has gone by so fast. And I want to thank you all, our special guests, <laughs> who were in the kitchen working and sharing these delicious recipes with us in the studios. I hope you enjoy them when you prepare them. Please walk us through what we prepared today, Stephanie and Sarah. Okay, we have the apple nachos. Mm -hmm. Delicious. We continue on with, next, what are these? Next, we made our fun fruit salads. The first one we made was the mango hedgehog. Mm -hmm. And then we had lots of fun making the race car as well. Oh, yes, definitely. And we see also on the screen this present. What is it? 
That is our veggie presents. <laughs> we wrapped up our vegetables in a present for supper. That's right. And what's this? And then we tried popcorn in a new way. This is cauliflower popcorn. Yummy. And this drink, the mysterious drink. Swamp water smoothie. Oh, wow. It's green like swamp water. It's good for you. <laughs> and then one of the favorites of the day, we made the fruit roll-ups. And we had the mango flavor and the strawberry. Yummy. I wish you were here with us in the studio. We had so much fun. All these little workers, and that, let them fool you. They're hard workers, and they know their way around the kitchen. Look at these smiles. <laughs> it's only because they're happy. Their parents take care of them. They dress them and feed them good food. Thank you, Stephanie, for being with us. And thank you, Sarah, for being with us. Your, you. All your efforts are very well appreciated. Come again. We will do that. <laughs> well, guys, friends, family, thank you for joining us during your program 3AB and today in the kitchen. May the Lord continue to bless you and your family and keep putting forth a great effort to have a nutritious, healthy meal for your family. Until next time. Bye. bye. <laughs>